Hi everyone, I'm Steven Padilla, Director of Coaching for the United States Bowling Congress. It's important to remember that every coach may have a different philosophy, especially on how to train an athlete for success at any level, especially the highest levels as well. Today I'm going to give you some information about the philosophy from the Director of Coaching's perspective. There's multiple coaching styles when it really boils down to understanding who you are as a coach. Uh, we see some coaching styles stand out specifically and of those styles we see some more successful than others. One of the styles we see is a command style where that coach tends to dictate everything that happens throughout either the practice sessions and or the competitions that the players are involved in. Now the command style has a lot of direction from the individual coach, but the players don't have a lot of input and there's really not a lot of thinking involved in the player side. The coach does all the driving of information and how, how to operate. Another coaching style we see is a submissive coach. They're kind of the opposite. They sit in the back of the room. They're really not engaged in a lot of what's going on. They're just there to kind of chaperone the event more than anything. <clears throat> These two coaching styles are completely different, but it could be a coaching style that you see needs to have some adjustment if you're fitting into one of those categories. The one we see most often and most successful is the cooperative style. This is where the coach is involved in just about every aspect, but they get a lot of feedback from the athletes. They, they work together, they build a relationship that helps them all understand exactly what goals they're headed toward and how to get there. We also, in the coaching philosophy field, want to understand a little bit about the code of ethics you need as a coach. As a coach, it's important to understand that you've got a lot of responsibility, not just to the athletes, but perhaps to the centers that you work inside of, perhaps to some of the programs you're involved with, um, academically in regards to perhaps high school or college programs, but a code of ethics for the coach can include a lot of different pieces. You want to be responsible for what your actions are. You want to make sure that you're following um, a good program of exactly how to communicate or exactly how to share information. You want to make sure that from the code of ethics perspective that you're also on time respectful, you're responsible for everything that happens in regards to your competitions or your practice and training sessions. Ultimately, the Code of Ethics are going to help define you as a coach and, and help you understand exactly what you can do moving forward to, to become better at your process and at your program. You also have legal responsibilities as a coach. When you become certified with our USBC programs, there are legal responsibilities that you're, you're underneath in regards to making sure there's a safe environment for the athletes when you're coaching, making sure that if there's any communication needs that those are done correctly and properly. Uh, the legal responsibilities fall in a lot of categories and we have a lot of good information in regards to exactly how to understand those and how to apply those to whatever environment you're in at the time. So remember it's important to understand who you are as a coach and what those responsibilities are inside of your programs. So be sure and check back with us for more Inside the Lab here on Bowl TV.